Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. sitting here. And you know, I'm in the sanctuary today. Uh, We've been doing taping. There's a lot of excitement going on here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ because as you know by now, and if you've been following this ministry at all, you know that week 100 is on, is I can't even say fastly approaching. We're on the heels of it. Here we are on Thursday getting ready for this Sunday, the day that the world has set aside to acknowledge and to celebrate the greatest thing that ever happened, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I thank God that our Lord is not in in the grave. You can't find his bones anywhere. You can't find his body anywhere. There is, there is, listen, He's alive and well. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's in the heart of every born-again believer. I thank God that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. And listen, listen, with all of the things that's going on in this world, you're watching the television, you're watching the news just as I am. You see the tragedy that has taken place up in the New York subway system. You see what's going on with the war in, uh, in in Ukraine. You know, the American media doesn't talk about what's going on in Ethiopia, so I guess those souls don't count. But we see what is, has transpired even with our open southern border. And my friends, I know that you are praying that God would across this nation give uh, parents the control in, uh, in educating their children. We do not I want to I want to I want to weigh in. We do not want think that it is right, that it is, it is appropriate, nor is it beneficial for kids kindergarten through third grade, in my opinion, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade and so on to be taught uh, uh, sex education and gender identity studies by uh, uh, school teachers and many of the teachers, and I'm not coming against teachers, but I am against the teachers union because it has been hijacked by a bunch of leftists and all they want to do is confuse our children in their formative years and make a little boy believe that, hey, even though I'm a little boy, I can be a little girl, or even though I'm a little girl, I can be a little boy. I call the uprising among parents that's taking place in the country, I call it revival. I call it a move of God. God is setting parents on fire and parents have been too lax. Parents have been too trusting. And of all the things that opened the parents' eyes, COVID-19, while people were home uh, and being uh, 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 on lockdown, parents started began to pay attention to what people have been telling their children. And all by all the woke stuff and, and we're convincing our kids, especially kids my color, that you should hate the nation, hate everyone who don't look like you, hate, 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 rebel, 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 and to try to create a victim class. Oh, my. I saw a report today to my African-American friends out there that said that the Hispanics aren't as welcoming as the victim theology and victimism and the victimization of people as African-Americans are because the Hispanics are busy trying to figure out how to get ahead, how to start their businesses. They're, 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 They're grateful for the start that they have. They're grateful that they're here, whether they're here legally or illegally. They'll take what they have and make something of it. Many of us, we're being convinced by wicked people on the left that we don't have anything, that we can't do anything, and what we have, we really don't have, and there is no hope, we can't get any better, and things like that, and I reject those isms and schisms and teachings 100%. I believe that we won life's lottery just by being born in America. Now, as you can see, 
I'm fired up. Why? Because, Gary, week 100 is almost here, and uh, I'm so excited. As you know, I just got back. I was out there in Texas with some of the finest people in the world, Miss Joni Lamb. As you know, God took Marcus home, uh, but Joni and her, her eldest son, Jonathan, and his wife and the Lamb family and the good people at Daystar have pull together and with the power of the God of the Bible, they are getting the job done. Uh, they're exploding and growing and the ministry is in tremendous uh, shape and they allowed yours truly to come out and to share. And I want to thank so many of you who have contacted us since we've been there. You've called from all over, literally all over the country, in and out of the country. People have reached out. Thank you for your kind words and comments. And thank you for your prayers. And thank God for Daystar. And may the Lord continue to bless and keep them. Now, uh, uh, last night, uh, well, last night, when I was at Daystar, I, 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 I preached a little. They gave me an opportunity to, to speak the word of the Lord. And my friends, we came from Isaiah chapter number 53. Uh, and the question that was asked was, who will de uh, declare his generation? Who will speak for Jesus Christ? Who will talk about Christ? And I'm still 100% convinced that what people need to hear is the gospel. People need to hear the word of God. People need to hear about Jesus. The drug dealer, the, the drug addict, everybody needs to hear about Jesus. The down and out, the up and out, the rich in their mansions need to hear about Jesus. The poor on the streets need to hear about Jesus. The black, the white, the Hispanic, the red, the yellow, everybody needs to hear about Jesus. The LBGTQ community, plus all of the other alphabets that go that that you guys are incorporating. After after a while, you'll have them all. You'll have them all. You need to know that Christ died for you and he died to save you from your sins and to bring you out of a lifestyle that's not like God and to put you in to uh, to make you who God intended you to be a transgender community. God wants you to know that he got it right. He did not mistakenly put a male's spirit in a female body and vice versa. Listen, if Campbell Soup Company can put can make sure that they put tomato soup in the tomato soup can, then don't you think God, the maker of all things, can, can put a male spirit, as he has been doing forever, in a male body, in the female spirit, in the female body? And so, listen, listen, I want to go into a little more depth Tonight, I want to I want to talk to you about the word of God. There are some things that I want to share with you that we weren't able to share while on the, uh, there with uh, uh, Daystar uh, just due to time constraints. But there is so much that God has to say to us. And I want to invite you, my friends. Listen, I want to invite you to meet me here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight. All who are uh, within the driving distance of the service, you want to come out, you want to be here, you want to be on time because we're going to, de to deliver the word of the Lord. And my friends who are streaming, who can't get here, thank God for every one of you. I look forward to your joining me tonight online and we're going to have a marvelous time in the Lord. And what's going to, what's going to take place tonight? Tonight, I'll tell you what's going to take place. Bible study. Ah, you didn't see it coming that time, did you? Yeah, Bible study. We are going to study the word of the Lord together, and God is going to bless us real good. Now, we'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And by the way, happy 100th. Live service day. You know, I'm creating a day. Happy, happy, happy 100. May God's blessings be yours. Thanks for watching.